Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to use a custom metadata type and custom metadata records in a Salesforce flow. I recently wrote a newsletter about this and had some questions about exactly how it worked, so I just thought I would make a video to kind of explain it. So I whipped up a brand new um, trailhead playground here, and I haven't customized anything in here at all. So this video might be a little bit longer as I kind of go through the process of building um, the different metadata types out and kind of building out the flow but there will be value in that if you've never kind of seen this before so what custom metadata lets you do is effectively abstract some of your flow logic to live outside of your flow that way um, if there are frequent changes to that um, whatever piece of the flow you don't have to constantly update the flow so that's a little bit kind of vague because you probably haven't worked with metadata before, so that may sound weird, but let's just dive into building it and I'll kind of show you what I mean. So I'm gonna go into the sales app here and um, the scenario I wrote about in my newsletter, I actually um, am a consultant and I work, I'm working with uh, one of my clients right now is a bank. And so the bank has a process where they review uh, credit risk for people and if you are, meet a certain threshold uh, certain people in the bank have to review your loans uh, based on how risky you are and the threshold has like six or seven different variables and they all have to be considered in order to decide who um, is going to do the review because if you're super risky if you're taking out you know three million dollars or ten million dollars from the bank uh, they need you know a very high level of compliance and a very high level of uh, scrutiny on that sort of loan because it's risky for the bank or the credit loss uh, you know could be large whereas if you're only taking out a hundred thousand dollars it's not as risky so we're not going to build all of that here in Salesforce but we are going to build some of it and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on accounts and I'll see what's in this brand new trailhead environment so they have a couple different accounts here. Let's look at the Edge Communications account. Okay, and they have four different opportunities. So I think we'll try to keep this simple and maybe we'll just uh, use the metadata to assign the owner of an opportunity based on the amount. And this will kind of map onto the bank scenario uh, in that we're gonna set up our amounts and who should uh, own opportunities above certain amounts um, in our metadata for our flow to use. And don't worry if you're not completely following along, uh, we're gonna go to the flow builder now and I'm gonna show you more and I think it'll start to become more clear. So I'm gonna click setup and we're just gonna navigate to the flow builder. It's a brand new environment so I get all the pop-ups. I recently learned that we can actually make our own pop-ups as admins, I didn't know that, so <laughs> pretty cool. Um, I'm just gonna click new flow when I was working with my client, this is a big screen flow and there's like 23 different screens, one for each of the you know very different credit scenarios that um, they have. We're gonna keep this really simple just to illustrate the core concept of metadata. So we'll click start from scratch and I'll press next and we're just gonna do a screen flow and we'll press create. And so um, we will create a screen and I was just kind of thinking through what we're gonna do here. I think we'll, to try to keep this simple, we're gonna have a screen here, and what we'll do is we'll put the screen on our account, and our screen, you know, it'll be a button up here at the top, or maybe we'll put it on the record page here, but the screen flow will create a new opportunity. And so that's what we're gonna build, and we'll have to get some of the required fields for an opportunity, like the name and the amount and the date. Um, and then where, what we'll use the metadata for is uh, assigning the opportunity owner um, or maybe even um, you know, having the potential owners of the opportunity uh, have the user choose that based on the amount they enter. And so that'll kind of illustrate the metadata concept. So let's go into the flow builder here and we'll just get started with the screen uh, for the opportunity creation. You can follow along in your own environment if you want to, but I'll try to, you know, make this a little bit faster just so you can get the concept of metadata um, without necessarily having to build all this out yourself. So we'll call this create opportunity screen. And you can see I'm just clicking some buttons here. I normally hide the pause button and hide the previous button if it's um, not needed. Um, you could leave the previous on there. Salesforce will hide it because this is the first screen in the flow. And then why don't we put some display text on here and we'll say, you know, DT underscore one. And that stands for display text one. 
So we'll say welcome to the opportunity creation screen. Please enter the opportunity information in the fields below. Great. And then I know that we'll need a text field for the name. We'll probably need either a number or a currency field for the amount. We'll need a date field for the date. And then we can set the account. We'll need the account to create the opportunity, but we can get that without putting it on the screen. And then I don't really um, like it. For whatever reason, I don't like when the fields run across the whole screen, especially when Salesforce came out with the section component. I like to just make a section now. Um, I feel it's a little bit cleaner. That's a personal preference, and that may just be <laughs> something I made up. But I, I like kind of having you know the two columns here, and then we can put our fields on the left and just have some blank space over here. So for this text field, we'll call it opportunity name. And then for the currency, we'll call this amount. And for the date, we'll call this close date. And I think we'll have to require all these fields so that an end user doesn't fill this out um, and you know forget one. So OK, so now we have all our fields. And we'll press Done. And we need to create a record variable now. So let's do New. And I like to just do this. Uh, this is the record ID of the account. And this is what we'll use uh, when we're creating our button so that when the screen flow is triggered, we can pull in the account ID and then use it to do different things in the flow. For now, I'm just going to make this a text uh, data type variable with the name record ID, and we'll mark it as available for input. And the reason I'm doing that is so that uh, when I use uh, create records right now, um, I can create an opportunity. Create opportunity. We're going to make one. We're going to do it manually. Be the opportunity record. And you can see these kind of fields are required, so they show up right away. And we'll just add in the account ID. So for close date, we will pick the close date uh, item from our screen. From name, we will pick opportunity name from our screen. Stage, I'll just set to prospecting. I'll add in the amount there. I'll set the account ID to be the record ID variable that we just created. And for amount, I'll map that to the screen component for amount. And we'll press Save. And I'll just call this screen create opportunity. And I'm intentionally leaving the owner blank um, because I'm going to create version one here, activate it, get it on to the account layout, just make sure it works before we add in the, the, the ownership logic. So I'm going to activate this. If you are in a real environment, you would want to debug this first, but I feel pretty good about it. So we're just going to skip the debugging part. And I'm going to navigate to the account object here. And we're going to make a new action that lets us um, call that flow. So opportunity screen flow, we'll just call this create opportunity. We'll press save. So now we have our button. And so let's go here. I can never remember what page layout um, we're looking at. So there we go. It's the account layout. And so now I'll add our button here. What did I call it? Create create opportunity. Oh, uh, override create opportunity. We'll save that. And we'll just see if it shows up here. And it does. OK, so we have our button. And if we press this, our screen should pop up. And we should be able to say, you know, test opportunity amount. We'll call it 75,000. And close date, we'll say tomorrow. And next. And you see that you know that works fine, and it creates our opportunity, and it's right here. And because we did not um, specify who the owner was, it just defaulted to me as the owner uh, because I ran the flow. So our, our flow is working. That's all great. So we'll, we'll press Delete. And now we'll kind of uh, take a step back and talk about the custom metadata. Um, sorry if the setup was boring, but I, you know, it's important to understand, you know, the use case and kind of like see what the flow is doing. And now we can pull in the piece about the custom metadata. So tying this back to the bank scenario, um, my client wanted to show basically a different review user um, for the review that was being done on a loan um, based on, you know, there were effectively seven different factors that we had to consider. 
To condense that here, what we'll do is we'll show a specific uh, list of users uh, for opportunities between certain amounts. And so that way, in our uh, screen, what we'll do is we'll add a dropdown that will show um, different names for uh, potential owners when the amount changes. So if the amount is 75,000, um, we'll see one set of owners. And if it were 50,000 or less, we would, we would see another set of owners. And so the point of this is that it will let us use metadata. So now let's go and create our metadata records. Our metadata doesn't live in the flow builder. It lives outside of the flow builder and it can be accessed by Apex or flows or, you know, kind of different automations that run in Salesforce. You can also get to it over the REST API. And the way to get there is just to come to this, you know, setup page with home and we'll type in custom metadata. And you see we have uh, metadata types here, so we can click this. And the way to think about metadata is it's kind of like a custom object. This is something that's going to live in the background. Only really system admins or administrative uh, users will be able to see it. And when we create a metadata type, we kind of go through a setup process very similar to the process we go through when we create a custom object. And so our first job is to name this. And so in this case, I'll name it, you know, like opportunity owners, or I guess just opportunity owner, because there's a plural. I don't know. I'm just going to call it opportunity owners in both. And I guess that's good enough. Um, you get some visibility options down here. I don't really, I just leave the default on this and just say everything can see it. Um, so we'll press save. And so now we've created our custom metadata type. And to continue with the custom object analogy, um, you know, this is the same as like we've now created our custom object. Now that we have this, we could add fields to our custom metadata. So let's do that now. And I'm going to add in, you know, a field here. You'll see that some of the fields um, are different. Like we don't have master detail relationship or lookup relationship available here. We just kind of have the standard data types. And so I'm going to make. Um, a pick list field and I'm going to call this like amount and we'll say just to keep it simple we'll say less than 100,000 or maybe I could just do um, the less than sign or greater or equal to 100,000. Maybe I should go back and just maybe I'll make that a currency or a number field. Um, we still call it amount and I'll do length 16, decimal places 2, and yeah, we can leave that like this. Um, okay, save. And so um, we have our first field here. And then the second thing that I'll do is I will make um, a field, a text, and we'll call it user ID. So we'll call it user ID, and that will be 18 characters, and we'll press next. And we'll add that to the opportunity owners layout. So when I was working with the bank, it was a little bit different. But what I've done here is I've effectively created um, a custom metadata type called opportunity owners, and I've added two fields to it amount and user ID. And so now what we can do is we have these two fields and we can actually create records of this metadata type. So you'll see there's a button here called manage opportunity owners. So we'll click that once. And this shows you a list of all the opportunity owners in Salesforce. Um, there aren't any because we just made this, but we can add a new one now. So let's say I press new, I can label this record and I'll just call it Nick Freights, which is my um, name. And maybe I'll say, uh, we'll pretend in this scenario that the amount is um, the amount that uh, I'm allowed to be the owner of an opportunity if it's equal to or less than amount that amount. So let's say I put in $100,000 here. Um, and then what I can do is I can go find my user ID. So we'll get that. And I'm going to just copy this from the URL. I'm going to go back to our metadata record and I'm going to uh, paste in that user ID there and I'll press save. And so now you see that we have, you know, Nick Freights, the amount is 100,000 and here's my user ID. Great. 
And there's not actually a great way to go back. So sometimes you can press the back button twice and it will take you there. Um, and you'll see that we now have, you know, one record in our metadata type for opportunity owners. And we could add, you know, I could create a new view, view for the opportunity owners. And I could add in those two fields here, maybe hide this other stuff and press save. And so now we see our owners and I'm going to hide this and maybe I'll switch this around like this and press save. And okay, so now we have Nick Freights. Oh, the amount's like way over there. Um, okay, let's move it back up. Okay, I don't know why they're scrunched together like that, but the amount's 100,000, which is opportunities I'm allowed to own if it's less than or equal to 100,000 and my user ID. And since I'm just doing this on the fly and I kind of made up what the amount field represented, I want to go back actually and go to the custom metadata uh, object. So I clicked on the setup menu to bring me back to the metadata types. And you'll see that now that we have our metadata type here, we have the option to customize the opportunity owners further. And if I uh, cl middle click that, or if I open it up in a new tab, you see we go back to the page where we can add fields. So you can always add more fields and come back and kind of customize this or add a validation rule. And um, if you want to manage records, you, you come to the metadata types and you can add records in the future um, from this view. And once again, what I did there is I just clicked manage records. And so um, on our amount field, I want to see if I can add a help text. I actually don't recall if you can add a help task text, but let's see. Yeah, okay, so amount. So just to make this easy, uh, this amount is what the user is allowed to approve or uh, allowed to be the owner of here. This represents the amount on an opportunity that the user is allowed to be the owner of. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense, but this amount field represents the amount on an opportunity that as a user you can be the owner of. Um, so now we have this set up and this is probably um, good enough for now. So let's go back to our flow and I'm gonna just uh, close out the flow and refresh this page last modified date, we'll switch that, we'll click our screen flow back open. And we can press save as here, and we'll just make a new flow version so that we can make edits. And after all this time, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where we're going to use our custom metadata, and we're going to have it appear in our screen. And so um, what we can do is like, we'll have the user enter the amount on this screen. And then after um, that screen, we'll use a get element. And so we'll say get uh, opportunity owners. And again, this is the name of our custom metadata. And what we can do now is we can search for the custom metadata type that we created right here. And you'll see that there's a new kind of entry here in Salesforce, which is opportunity underscore owners underscore underscore MDT, which stands for metadata type. So we'll click that open. And what we're going to do is we're going to query for all of the metadata records where the amount on the metadata record is less than or equal to the amount in our screen. And we'll get all of the records. And so this is one way where we can query for our data. Um, so we'll press save. This actually might not be the way we want to do it. so. Um, yeah, we're actually going to change this, but <laughs> it, it does illustrate the point that we can effectively now query for the metadata. And so what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to create another screen here and we'll just call this like the owner screen. And, um, we are going to bring, well, first we'll bring a section component here, kind of split it up in two. And then I'm seeing the pause button there. So I'm going to hide the pause button. But now we're going to bring the drop down component over. Where's the pick or pick list? Excuse me. We'll put that there. I know I'm going in like a random order. We'll put a display text here. We'll call this uh, owner selection. 
And so here I'll just say, please select an owner for the opportunity. Like owner choice. And so we'll require that. And this is where we're going to use our metadata for real. So in our choice element, we can click once to add a new choice. And we'll press new choice resource. And in the resource type, I'm going to um, select here the record choice set. And so you can see in the subtext, it says generate a set of choices using a filtered list of records. So we'll click that once and we'll call it uh, owner choice. And the object will be um, just like we did in, in our get records, it'll be the opportunity owners. And you can see when I type it in, it'll be opportunity owners underscore underscore metadata type. And just like we did in our get records, which we don't need anymore, we're gonna say that the amount on the opportunity owner metadata type is less than or equal to the amount in our screen component. And so what this choice will do is it's going to say, hey, go into Salesforce, find any owner who can own an opportunity that's less than or equal to the amount that was typed in the screen, and then show that in a list. So this is our filter criteria up here at the top where we're filtering the records. And then down below, we, can, we need to provide a label for our choice. So we're just going to select the label, and that's the name of the record, of the metadata record. So this will read Nick Freights. And then we uh, need to provide a value to the flow for when the choice is selected. And in that scenario, what we'll do is we're going to use the user ID. And so in this way, we have dynamically paired the name and the user ID. And the reason the user ID is there um, is so that we can use it to assign the ownership inside of the flow. You could store other field values down here below, but we're not going to do that. So I'll press done now, and I'll press uh, done again. Then I'm going to delete our get opportunity records get element because we don't actually need it. And I'll press save in our flow. And that will save. And now we can debug it. And so if you'll recall in this scenario, what we're pretending or what we're emulating is that only certain uh, owners in Salesforce or certain people in Salesforce, let's call them the sales reps, should be able to own opportunities if they are above or below certain amounts. So when I debug the flow, you'll see that we get the same screen that we got before. Oh, we have to specify the account. Put in the account ID, where's the flow? Right there. We'll press run and we get our first screen. So you know, once again, we'll call this the test opportunity. And this is where we'll put in our amount. And I might have done the amount wrong um, in our query. So let's see. What I'm expecting is because this opportunity amount is $75,000, that's less than the $100,000 on the Nick Freights user. So this Nick Freights uh, opportunity owner record should appear in our choices. And I'm thinking I got that backwards. So we'll see. Now I'll just put in this close date and press next. And you see that nothing pops up here because our query is backwards. So let's go back to our uh, record choice. I'm just going to open up the toolbox here and we're going to flip that to be greater than. Yeah, so we have owner choice as our record choice set. We'll click that open and we're going to say that the uh, amount on our metadata record is greater than or equal the amount in our screen flow. And that should fix that problem. And so again, I just click the record choice set over here, which is used in our owner screen. And if we debug again, and we paste in the same account ID, and we make a test opportunity, and I put in $75,000, that is less than $100,000. And so now when I click next, and we show the owner screen, we should see that Nick Freights appears here. And so again, the reason that Nick Freights record is appearing here is because we have our record choice element querying our custom metadata right here. And Nick Freights is listed um, as someone who uh, is cleared to own opportunities, you know, in our logic, in our business scenario, we're saying the Nick Freights user is allowed to own any opportunity record up to $100,000. And so that's really awesome because um, now it just shows up in the flow. But you might be wondering, what's the point? Like, why is this so helpful? And the reason it's helpful is that this logic could get really complicated. 
Uh, so in this scenario, we're just doing the amount, but you can imagine that you might have three other fields that you have to check. Or in my bank, uh, in the client scenario with the bank I was working with, we had seven different things we had to check. And so um, rather than having to put all of that lo logic inside of the flow, you can put some of it here in the metadata type. So I could add other users here. Let's say we add in Bob Apples, and we'll say that Bob Apples is cleared uh, to own opportunities up to a million dollars. And we can do save and new, and then we could say Susan Apples uh, can own opportunities up to $10 million. And you'll notice I'm leaving the user ID blank because these users don't actually exist in Salesforce. But the idea is that these would be real users in your Salesforce environment, and you would just find their user ID the same way we found the Nick Freights user ID, and you would put um, their user ID right here and press save. And so now uh, you see that we added those um, new records here, and we didn't change our flow at all. So no changes were made to the flow. But if we go back here and I press next again, you see that those three records, or those two records we just added, pop up here. So that's the power of the metadata, is that we don't need to update our flow at all. Um, all of the records you know, related to this pick list can live outside of the flow and can be managed there long term so that you know, if the business comes back and says, oh, we have a, you know, a new user that needs to get added, all you have to do is add them as a metadata type or as, as a metadata record in your existing metadata type and then just specify the amount and then you don't have to update your flow. And in complex scenarios where you know the amounts could be changing or um, users might be coming into the organization or leaving the organization or maybe Bob Apples got promoted and so now he can also handle opportunities up to 10 million. If you tried to work in a bunch of if then statements like into your flow as formulas or, or with different queries, it could get really tedious. And so the whole point of the metadata is to make your life easy in the long run. And so I hope that makes sense. The final step to get this to work would be to uh, map the user ID into our opportunity when we're creating the opportunity. So here what we would do is we would just say that the owner ID equals and then we're going to choose that choice uh, record that we made, where is it, owner choice. So that's the screen component, that's the owner choice. And again, what we did there is you can see in our record choice set over here on the left, uh, we said that the owner choice record, no matter who is selected, we're going to store that user ID value um, based on the field in our metadata type. And that's how you kind of connect the two. Uh, that's how we connect our opportunity owner metadata record with an actual user so that we can map an actual user into the owner ID field in our create opportunity uh, record or element in our flow. So I'll press save. I'm going to activate this. And if we go all the way back to edge communications and refresh this page, um, and then we press create opportunity, you know, we can do it for real, we'll say test opportunity. And if I put in the amount of $750,000, uh, the Nick Freights user will not appear or the Nick Freights opportunity owner will not appear. And we should just see Bob Apples and Susan Apples, uh, whose amounts in their record are above um, 100,000. So we'll press next. And that's what we see. And so you know, this was a kind of good overview of custom metadata. The scenario is a little bit flimsy. Like you could probably, if these were your only requirements is to have an amount field, you could probably just put that amount field on the user record and do a query that way. But sometimes your, um, your uh, business requirements have something that, you know, it's not even a Salesforce object at all. It could be something like an insurance policy or like a lead assignment criteria or a tax um, policy in the state that you live in. And in those scenarios, it can be really helpful to have uh, the metadata um, abstract away or hide um, all the complex logic from the flow and have it live in those metadata records where you can change them you know, whenever you want as the admin, and then you can leave the flow alone. Um, 
So anyway, I hope this was helpful. I know this video is a little bit long. We kind of started from the bare foundation and then came all the way uh, through building a screen flow and you know how the metadata type works. And I think that was really important for you know just understanding this whole process. So thank you uh, so much for watching. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them uh, in the comments below. Thanks so much.